Father, we we thank you and we declare our love for you. We say we love you. We love your name. Your name is the greatest. Your name is the delight of our soul. Your name is our heart desire. You are all that we long for. You are all that we seek. And we give you praise, Jesus. Be exalted in Jesus' name. Thank you for this evening, for another moment of fellowship. We give you praise. Be exalted, Lord, in Jesus' name. We ask that you cause your word to come to us expressly. And in ways we can understand. And cause our hearts to be pliable. Even by the instrumentality of your word. Let your word go into the deepest places of our hearts. And bring about transformation. And bring about alignment to your ways and to your thoughts. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus name we pray. Praise Jesus forevermore. Shout hallelujah. Please, let's come together. Right, let's come to this side. Let's come together. Praise Jesus forevermore. Shout hallelujah. Glory to Jesus in the highest. Praise Jesus forevermore. Alright, good evening. Welcome to Bible study. Welcome to Bible study. It's always a privilege to be in your midst and fellowship with you in the Word of God. And I thank you so much for the privilege given to me to always share God's Word with you. Praise Jesus forevermore. And I trust that always that God will always transform us by the instrumentality of His Word. Praise Jesus forevermore. Okay, so we've been on a series, uh, Your Dominion Mandate. Just enjoy, just follow me as I'm going gently. Don't worry, when the Lord gives me strength, the, the kind of strength that will allow me to go. Blah, 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 blah. But even, even if I go gently, there's power and there's grace in the Word of God. You understand? So just follow me with your heart. Praise Jesus forevermore. Praise Jesus forevermore. Your dominion mandate. So Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. The Bible says, And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them do what? Let them have dominion. So we've been looking at the fact that man was made for dominion. Praise Jesus forevermore. I can't overemphasize these things to you. Praise Jesus forevermore. Amen. We have to keep reminding ourselves of these things. Can everybody hear me? We have to keep reminding ourselves of this now. We are what? We are here for dominion. Now one aspect of dominion that we will be considering in like two teachings now. This is the third, third part where I will be considering this particular emphasis. Is your dominion mandate and the things of life. I think this is the third part where I will be emphasizing. This is the third teaching where I will be emphasizing that. Amen. You know, this is the tenth part of this series, as a whole series. But I've been, I've been picking different emphasis. No, I will soon close the series. <laughs> you understand? Yeah, but just, just enjoy it. Just enjoy. It. Do you know, do you know the beauty of series. It allows us to see different parts of of an holistic matter. It helps us to leave nothing untouched or undone. You understand? Even though the assistant of you might not still be able to consider, but at least we will have considered some very cogent things. And we are totally built. Praise Jesus never more. And if you have followed me for a while, you know that I think I have I cannot lie for myself. I think I have my strength is in series. I can do series. I don't know where I got that grade. I don't know. I just some, God just showed me, okay. You want to, well, this is what we want to teach. Before I know it, God has turned into a series in my hand. By the time I start preparing it, I turned into a series. So I have strength. That's, that's my area of strength and I can't deny it. Praise Jesus forevermore. Because actually my, my primary anointing is that of a teacher and I'm an expository teacher. And when you're doing expository, expository teaching, you can't do it in one teaching. You understand? And the way by which God's will be built and established is through teaching. 
in depth of the world you can't come and do 20 minutes and we say you are you are now a perfect christian you can't be perfect let anybody lie to you 20 minutes of god's work cannot perfect you don't don't deceive yourself guys you understand it can't perfect you so we have to stay on god's work. and don't be tired of don't 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 long to hear new things there's no new thing anywhere you understand let us stay on this one thing one thing is needful let's stay on that one thing and of course you know now if you have listened to my teachings even if you see part 25 i don't say the same thing part one and part 25 i'm saying different things and all of it are very very essential praise jesus favor more i just said that to, to let you know that series is beautiful you understand and many of us love season movies <laughs> We don't, even, we don't even want it to film, but, but we don't love season gospel. Season, season one of gospel, season one, season two. And this person before you is a producer of season gospel. Season one, season two, season one, episode one. <laughs> season one, episode 52. <laughs> well, we are going to season 10. <laughs> we better enjoy it. Not to run away from, from me. We have to run away now. <laughs> we are still able to run away. He said, you know, you can't run away. Praise Jesus, very well. So your dominion mandate, this is part 10, but on this particular emphasis, your dominion mandate and things of life, this is the third teaching. And I hope it will be the last, the final teaching, so that I'll pick up another emphasis next week, Thursday, by God's grace. Praise Jesus, heaven, huh? Shout hallelujah. We won't be having Sunday evening meeting this coming Sunday. We just have our morning service this coming Sunday. Do you understand? I'm saying that I won't forget. Also, if I forget, I've already mentioned it. So there is no evening Bible study, no evening service on Sunday evening. We just have morning service. So after morning service on Sunday, we meet again on Thursday. You understand? Then Sunday morning, then Sunday evening. But this particular, this coming Sunday, we are not having evening Bible study. Praise Jesus, evermore. Shout hallelujah. Praise God. No, bro, bro, don't be, it's just for this evening. <laughs> just, don't be sad, don't be sad already. It's just for this coming Sunday evening. We will resume, after the Sunday evening, we will continue our Sunday evening Bible study. You understand? So just for this coming Sunday evening, we won't have Bible study in the evening. But we have service in the morning. Praise Jesus forevermore. So your dominion mandate and the things of life. We begun to understand that one of the ways God wants us to express our dominion is over the things of life. God wants us to rule the things of life. Does not want the things of life to rule us. Does not want the, the things of life to determine the temperature of our heart. Does not want the things of life to determine the direction of our life, our attitude and our behaviors. Praise Jesus. He wants us to have a full grip and a firm grip on the things of life. Glory to Jesus, name of God. The things of life must not be our master. Amen. Praise Jesus forever more. Now, I told you that whenever I told you that if you don't if we don't exercise dominion over the things of life, we can't follow the Lord. Amen. Did I mention that in the last teaching? Okay, if I didn't mention that, I'm mentioning it now. If we don't exercise dominion over what? Over the things of life, we can't follow the Lord. Amen. The agenda, the reason why the things of life, the end game, the end point for why the things of life want to have dominion over us is to cut short our work with God. It's to cut short our work with Jesus. Amen. When the things of life begin to have dominion over us, the end game, the end point is to what? Is to cut short our work with Jesus. We can't work with Jesus. You can't. And I showed you from the last in the last teaching, from which scripture was that? Uh, I showed you one particular scripture. Let me see if I can find it. Okay, where Paul was speaking in in Philippians chapter three verse seven. Whose God is your belly? Whose end is destruction? So whenever you make your belly your God, your end is always what destruction. Amen. So the agenda of the things of life. When the Lord on our hearts to rule us is to what? Is to lay us to perdition. Amen. Is to do what? Yes. Is to lay us to perdition. Whenever the things of life laid on your soul and is in control, when the things of life are in control of your life, control of your soul, 
you have actually begun a journey to hell. I follow my friends. You have begun a what? A journey to what? To hell. You have begun a journey to perdition. You might still be speaking in tongues. But if the things, if you don't exercise dominion over the things of life, if the things of life lay out on your soul and begin to rule you, you have begun a journey into perdition. Amen. Praise Jesus forevermore. Whenever what? The things of life lay on your soul and begin to rule you, rule you, you have what? Begun a journey into perdition. There are many routes to perdition. There are many routes to destruction. And I, I told you last that religion is one of it. Mora- morality is one of it. And I mean moralism, whatever you like, is one of it. And this thing called things of life ruling a man's soul is also one of it. And it's one of the ways by which Christians will end. By which some Christians, tongue talking people, they end in perdition. Amen. Praise Jesus forevermore. Because when you are when you are led by a thing or by somebody, you only end where that thing will end. Praise Jesus forevermore. Now, what is the sum? What is the summary of all the things of this life? What does that show us about the thing? The summary of the things of life. They shall be burned in fire. They'll be destroyed. I know you are looking at me. The look at first Peter is there. Everything will burn away. And of course, it, it's not tell us in John. Love not the world, nor the things of the world. Are you following my friends? If any man loves the world, love for that world is not in him. Are you following my friend? I'm talking about things he said, love of the eyes, the, the, the loss of the eyes, of the and pride of life. He said these are not from the father. Now it says, and the world passeth away, and the lost thereof, and everything it can offer. But only those who love God what, will endure. So, the world and these things always do what? Pass away. They always end. They always end. Are you following my friend? The way to ensure an enduring life is to ensure that your life is ruled by something higher. I feel my friends. And what is that which is higher than your life, than your soul? It's the kingdom. And only those kingdom is enduring in the real sense. The things of life are not enduring. Amen. Praise Jesus forevermore. Shout hallelujah. The things of life are not what? Are not enduring. So, you end in the place where what is ruling your heart ends. Amen. So, whatever is ruling your heart, whatever is ruling your soul, you are going to end. You are going to the same destination as that thing. Praise Jesus forevermore. Shout hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Praise God forevermore. Are you following my friends? Amen. So, when the things, are, I'm showing you, when the things of the, whose God is that belly, whose end is destruction? When your belly starts to become your God, when the things of life begin to rule you, lay on your soul. Is leading you towards nowhere but what? But destruction. The plan of the things of life is to lay, lay on your heart, lay on your soul, govern your soul until you lose your bearing and your direction towards heaven. Until you lose your bearing and your direction towards the kingdom of God. Now, I don't want to go back and start telling you, you know, you have to reign over the things of this earth. You, you can use the best thing. I've told you all those ones already. So let's now face another part of this business which is very, very important. Because some of us Christians know that we, can, we should use the things of life. We should, we should only be poor. You understand? We know that we should have dominion about money. I, in what sense? We, we, must, we should have money, use the good things of life and all of that. But we don't know that we are not to be ruled by these things. Some of us don't know. And somehow, directly or indirectly, we are being ruled by these things. And even though we are still speaking in tongues, we have begun to quietly journey towards hell. Amen. So you see a brother, a Christian brother, is not fornicating, he's not committing anything, but he's on a trajectory towards hell. <laughs> he's speaking in tongues seven hours. But he's on what? A trajectory towards what? Hell. Why? 
because his soul is what being governed by the things of life is act is being ruled by the things of life praise jesus favor more is being ruled by what by the things of life he's not ruling the things of life he himself is being ruled by, two, by the things of life so the plan of the things of life if it lays on your soul is to cut, cut short your journey with jesus it's going to end your journey with jesus so whilst god wants us to enjoy the things of this life he wants us to rule over the things of, of this life he wants us to exercise dominion over the things of this life he doesn't want them to rule us praise jesus favor more i'm trying not to rush this teaching i want you to get the best of it and i'm also trying to conserve my energy also i'm doing two things at the same time <laughs> praise jesus favor more. i'm very tired but I can't, tired, tired cannot be a reason for me not to, it cannot be an excuse. I say, how, what happened, Pastor? There was no other story. Say, I was tired. How? 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 Which kind of tired is that one? <laughs> Praise Jesus, wait a moment. Look at 1 Timothy chapter 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6. From verse 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6, from verse 6. But godliness with contentment is what? Is great gain. Can you say godliness? godliness. But godliness with contentment is what? Great gain. Praise Jesus forevermore. Your dominion mandate and what? And the things of life. But godliness with contentment is what? Great is great gain. Godliness like, more like behaving like God, you understand? In some, in some sense. Hmm? Ruling, having authority, doing things that God will do. Behaving like God, having some thoughts. I don't. I don't want to say having the thoughts of God. But if I say having the thoughts of God, I have have summarized as you having all of the thoughts of God. So I want to say having some thoughts of God. I want to say something. Having some thoughts of God, thinking some thoughts of God. Amen. Behaving like God in some ways. Maybe because any poverty, you have learned to behave like God. I know I can't be poor. I'm going to have money. I'm going to be rich. I'm not going to suffer in this life. I'm not going to fail. I can't fail on, and all of that. Things have to work for me. You understand? And also perhaps only living. You understand? Only living. I'm living above sin. Living above worldliness and all of that. Do you understand? Godliness. Godlikeness. You understand? But I, I want to show you something. Don't worry. We can't finish this emphasis today. I've already seen it. It's, 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 when I started talking, I saw, I saw I need my that I can't finish it. So I won't try to finish it. Don't worry, I will, I will conclude this emphasis. Your dominion money and the things of life. I'll conclude next week, Thursday. I can't finish it this evening. Praise Jesus, favor. Mm-hmm. Godliness with what? Mm-hmm. With contentment is great gain. Does this mean that we can have godliness without contentment? Look at your Bible. That's why when I was defining godliness in this context, I try not to say. You thinking the thoughts of God, like capturing all of God's thoughts in everything God thinks as if you are thinking like God. Because Paul says, Godliness with contentment. Rice and beans is very sweet. <clears throat> you understand? That means I can have rice without beans. Godliness with contentment is what? Great gain. So it's possible to have godliness without what? Contentment. You understand? It's possible to have some thoughts of God, to think in some ways like God, to be holy in some ways like God, to be righteous in some ways like God, and to even have authority over some things in some ways like God. Yet you don't have contentment in your heart. And I'll show you the meaning of this contentment. Can you say godliness, godliness. 
with contentment is great gain. So, what is godliness without contentment? <laughs> Guys, read your Bible with English. You. Don't look for third level interpretation. It's simple. The Bible is simple. That's, see, the first way to begin to understand your Bible, first read it literally. Understand it that way first. Are you following under the influence of the Spirit? Understand what? That way. Don't look for third level revelation. The, the, the path that leads to error is to come and you to start looking for third level revelation. You start what they wrote, what you can see, what you can read in English. Godliness with contentment is great gain. Meaning that it can be godliness without contentment. So, if godliness with contentment is great gain, what then is godliness without contentment? Talk to me now. <laughs> hey, hey guys, you're doing a spiritual value. Godliness without contentment is what? Great loss. Godliness without contentment is great loss. <laughs> guys, are you ready for this thing at all? Godliness without contentment is what? That means if you have godliness, and really godliness in this sense, what when we're talking about godliness, it's talking more of character, more like how do I put it? Maybe being holy, a life of purity, stuff like that. You understand? A righteous life in that sense. Do you get? It's talking of moral, let's bring it down to morality. I fully my friends. Praise Jesus forevermore. Shout hallelujah. Amen. Godliness with with contentment is great gain. So, what leads to great gain? Ah, I wish I had the word. Godliness plus contentment equals great gain. So, if you want to have great gain, Amen. There are two indices that must be combined. They are called what? Godliness and contentment. The only equation that leads, the only, the only equation that leads, that leads to the result of a great gain is what? Godliness plus contentment. If you remove contentment from godliness, you can't have great gain. You will have great loss. I'm great sorry. You will do what? Because contentment there, yeah, as you begin to see, speaks about who is in charge of your soul. In relation to the things of life, I feel it, my friends. Are you with me? Contentment there, contentment there speaks of what? Who is in charge of your soul? In what? In relation to the things of life. Have you not seen brothers, Christian brothers, speaking in tongues, who are very covetous? Talk to me. They are covetous. You have not seen some of them. Christian brothers and sisters, you're not saying one little coco. They always want to take someone else's thing. They are never satisfied with their own thing. Are you my friends? They are never when, when you give them they're not satisfied. They want they always want they are not they are greedy. Greedy tongue talking people. Greedy demon casting out people. They cast out demon, but they're what? There's a demon of greed in their own soul. Amen. Shout hallelujah. Praise Jesus forevermore. Godliness with contentment is great gain. Now that godliness is more of okay, moral purity and some other you can do some stuff, you can speak in tongues, you can cast out, you can do some things like God. But contentment speaks of the state of your soul in relation to the things of life. <laughs> Praise Jesus. It speaks of what? The state of your soul in relation to the things of life. That is, when it comes to the things of life, who is ruling your soul? What is ruling your soul? The things of life or something higher than the things of life. I'll, I'm, I'm taking you on a journey. Amen. So, even though you say you are so godly, I feel my friends. But we find greed inside, you find covetousness in your heart, in your soul. I follow my friends. If you if you invert that scripture, 
you will end in great loss. You will suffer great loss. Let's keep reading. But godliness with contentment is great gain. Now, when you begin to when you want to start understanding some things concerning God's heart and God's word, don't be afraid to let go of your former understanding. That's another thing that will help you. Do you understand? God's word does not come to God does not primarily come to strengthen your former understanding. It comes to establishing the understanding of God. So if the former understanding was God's understanding, it comes to establish you in it, to strengthen it. If it was not God's understanding, it comes to shake it off. Praise Jesus. So many times when we don't grow in the knowledge of God, we are afraid to let go of the old, of our former knowledge and, and realm of understanding. Praise Jesus forevermore. Godliness with contentment is great gain. Now look at it. For we brought nothing into what? This world. And it is certain that we can carry nothing out. Are you following my friends? For we do what we do, we did what? We brought nothing into this world. And it is what? Certain that we can carry nothing out. So, when he was speaking of contentment, he was speaking in relation to what? The things of this world. Are you following me now? Godliness, the contentment, is, is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world. So, that contentment speaks to our relationship to the what? To the things of this world. To the things of life. Amen. Our relationship to the what? To the things of life. And Paul says, our relationship to the things of life must be on the premise of what? Contentment. It must be enveloped by what? Contentment. He says, if our relationship with the things of life is not captured in contentment, he says we can't have great gain. Even though we claim to be godly. Even, even though we are godly. As it were. Amen. <laughs> friends, are you with me? So, it means that the things of life, friends, are you with me? The things of life, if not put in proper perspective, can annul your godliness. <laughs> you didn't get that. The things of life, if not put in proper perspective, can show it, can stain your godliness, can annul it. Amen. Amen. It can cut you away from godliness. <laughs> if you don't put it in the right proper perspective, you will soon start to become ungodly. Actually. Amen. Because lack of contentment is not what? It's not godlike. Amen. So, the whole structure of your godliness can be affected by one simple virus called covetousness or lack of contentment amen so the whole structure of goodness you have built if one virus enters called lack, lack of what contentment or covetousness it can destroy that whole structure and make you ungodly praise Jesus forevermore and make you what ungodly so whilst we are fighting for your godliness you must also fight for your art position towards the things of life. The position of your heart, your relationship with what? The things of life. I follow my friends. It is called contentment. A con contentment shows that what? You are having dominion over, over the things of life. When you are contented. Contentment is not a lot of mediocrity. <coughs> I follow my friends. I will show you. Contentment is not what? A life of mediocrity. Praise Jesus forevermore. For we brought nothing into this world, and he said we can carry nothing out. We did what? We brought nothing into this world, and he said we can do what? Carry nothing out. So, <coughs> there are things in this world, good things. I follow me. In other words, we didn't bring anything into this world. And we're not going to take anything out. But we met things in the world. 
and there are a lot of beautiful things in the world. And now says those things in the world are meant for a brief moment on earth. They are meant for our journey on earth. Amen. They are meant for what? Our journey on earth. And we are done, when we are done with our journey on earth, we are not going to take what? A single thing out of this world. Bury a man with ten billion dollars. When his soul is standing before God, his one own error is not attached to his soul. He's not wearing clothes. He's not wearing he will bury a man with gold clothes. He's not like he's not he's not standing before God with the gold clothes. That cloth dies in the ground. I feel like my friends. Bury a man with all the money in the world. Let them go and drink his grave 500 years. If money is not decayed, they still find it there. But he will have decayed. His body will have decayed. And his soul will have gone. Well, let me stress you down. To the grave. Eventually, it will stand before God's judgment seat. Eventually. Now, when you are standing before God's judgment seat, even though they decorated your body with gold, with diamond, with all of that, when you are standing, all the things of the earth, they can't ascend this earth. They can't ascend. They drop. They drop because they are low. They can't fly. They can't be raptured. Oh, friend, are you with me? The thing that they can't be what? They can't be raptured. They can't go into heaven. They can't start before the Father. Amen. We brought nothing into the world and it is sure, certain that we can take what? Nothing out. So, the things of the earth are for our enjoyment in our brief moment in the earth. Amen. But even though that is the plan of God, these things that are for our enjoyment in our brief moment in the earth can stop our eternal destiny. Amen. Our great days that eventually will come to reign with God and His kingdom. will come to inherit God and His kingdom. That is great gain. Praise Jesus forevermore. Shout hallelujah. What, what, what is our great gain? That will come to inherit God and His kingdom. That's the great gain for us. But if this great gain was, if they are going to attain to this great gain, there must be contentment. And contentment is with your relationship to the things of the world. So, if the things of the world, which you, you did not bring into the world, God let them, God created them in the world, and put you in the world, and you are not going to take it out of the world. If those things of the world begin to rule your heart, begin to rule your soul, <laughs> I follow my friends, they are creating a path for you that will not lead to God's kingdom. Amen. You will end in the head. All that means you will end in the head. You have no eternal record with God. You have no place to go in eternity. Praise Jesus forevermore. Shout hallelujah. For we brought nothing to this world and he started we're not going to take anything out. We didn't bring anything into the world. Can you say I didn't bring anything into this, into this world? And I won't take anything out. So, how can you be ruled by something that you can't even take out of the world? You can't take it out. No matter how much you plan and devise to take anything out of this world, you can't do what? You can't, there's no technology for it. Amen. Ah, see how the houses are built. Hey, these are, I will die and leave it behind. No, I will convert it to every currency. I will convert There's a money that's going in heaven. Every, every Bitcoin. I will convert it and carry it to heaven. <laughs> no technology. I follow my friends. To convert the earthly things, the things of this earth, to what you can take out of this world. There's one that, it can't fly. I follow my friends because they are of the earth but your soul is meant to leave the earth I follow my friends now where your soul will end eternally is a function of what will not is a function of what what will not pass the earth gives to your soul <laughs> you didn't get that your soul after this higher than the earth or the earth now the end of your soul, where your soul will end eventually, is a function of what 
the things of the head that will not leave the head. What they did to your soul or what your soul did with them. Did they rule your soul or did your soul rule them? I follow my friends. Praise Jesus. The things of the earth are like those scouts. Those Agoro guys. They don't have any way they are going. They are not in the journey. Guys, can you, can, can you hear me? They are not part of the what? They are not part of the journey. They are not, in, they are not going to the destination. They are just calling people here, enter bus, enter bus, but they are not going. I feel my friends. The things of the earth will not escape this earth. But you are not a creation that is meant to end in the earth. Whether you believe in Jesus or not. No, 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 creation, no creation of God. Believe in Jesus or not, will end in the earth. There are two eternal destinations. The lake of fire and the kingdom of God. Amen. Praise Jesus forevermore. So, every soul, every man will, 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 will spend eternity in either of this eternal destination. Amen. And Paul begins to show that for the Christian man, one of the criteria, one of the things that will determine whether he will come into grace gain, and I'm showing you something now, is what did he do with the things of the world? Did he rule over the things of the world? All was ruled by the things of the world. Praise Jesus forevermore. Shout hallelujah. For we brought nothing to this world, and the Saturday we can carry nothing out. You can do what? Carry nothing out. If you die now, you plan to take hundred billion dollars out of this world, you can't take it. You can't do what? It is not madness that what you cannot, what you can, it means you can't control it. Do you understand? It means you can't, it means you are not in control. If, if, if you know you can't take it out of the world, it means that eventually you, are, you can't control that thing. Do you understand? It's controlled by an higher force. And that higher force, that higher being God, has set the, the, what is it? The boundaries for the things of the earth. It says the end in the earth. Amen. So, even your desire to take them out of the earth cannot take them out of the earth. Do you understand? So, is it not foolishness to allow what you can't take out of the earth, what you cannot by yourself, by your real power, take out of the earth? Is it not foolishness to allow it to rule you? Or is it not foolishness to allow what you cannot determine to bring to the earth? When you are coming to the earth, you didn't bring ten naira with you. You didn't say, "Okay, I'm going to the earth now, so I'm taking five hundred fifty-four billion dollars, one hundred ten million pounds, and all of that." You say, "I'm taking to the earth." You didn't determine. Praise Jesus, forevermore. If you could, if you could, if you could determine what you can bring to the earth, some of us will not be born, born into the families we are born into. <laughs> will not be what born into what the families we are what born into. Praise Jesus, forevermore. So the things of the earth were made by God for our use. Can you say for our use? Things are for what? Are for our use. Things are for what? But many times things begin to use us. Amen. And when things begin to use us, they are using a, they are using a, a way of a place in eternity with God. They are using a way our great gain. Praise Jesus forevermore. Now watch it. It has said in, I told that when it said, God oh, contentment. That contentment is talking about what the things of the earth. You understand? Oh, talking about the things of the earth. Uh, what's that? I'm looking for a particular word. Things that, are, things that we should use. You understand? There's a particular word. It just ran away. Praise Jesus, Praise Jesus forevermore. Shout hallelujah. Is that they are they are necessary? That's not the word, but let me still use that. Things that are necessary for our work, for, for our head work. I follow my friends. Now Paul now said in verse eight, and having food and raiment, let us be what. Talk, having, having food and raiment, let us be what. Let us be what. <laughs> and having food and raiment, let us be dear with content. If we have food and raiment, we should be what. Godness with contentment is what? 
If you have food and raiment, let us do what? So content, contentment is in a contest of the things of life. Amen. Shout hallelujah. What shall we wear? I think it was that scripture. What shall we wear? What shall we be clothed? And all of that. So Paul borrowed that from Jesus and brought it here. Food and raiment. Let us be what? Be content. It's possible to settle for an average life. Answer me. It's possible to settle for an average life. You think so? He's not saying that. Yeah, now show you. He's not saying that. Because Paul was a student of the Spirit. This same Paul that spoke in this Timothy spoke in other places in Timothy that God has given us all things richly to enjoy. Do you understand now? Do you get it? He said again in Romans that he who fully gave up his son for us, how shall he not with him do what? Freely give us all things. So that kind of man cannot be saying we should for what? An average life. He was talking about the position of the soul, the position of the heart in relation to the things of life. Is your heart true? A contented man, I'm not saying a, a mediocre. Some people hide mediocrity and a low life under the guise of contentment. They are not contented. Actually, they are covetous. I feel my friends. Praise Jesus forevermore. Paul is not endorsing a life of mediocrity. Amen. Is not what? Endorsing what? A life of mediocrity. Is addressing a very cogent matter of the art of the soul, a very serious sickness in the soul that can lead the man to perdition. He said, He says, So, having food and raiment, let us therewith be content. If we have the things that we need for life, the basic things of life being supplied to us, say we should what? We should be content. Praise Jesus forevermore. <laughs> Praise Jesus forevermore. Contentment is is a spiritual nature that shows that a man has begun to rule over the things of life. Do you understand? People who have this kind of contentment, they aim for great things in life. Do you understand? But they are masters of the things of life. So, this contentment is not talking of a low life, it's not talking of an average life. It's saying, thank you Jesus, is saying that you have mastered the things of life such that even if it's only remnant and food you have, you are content. The order of your heart, the order of your soul is not being directed by the things of life. Mm. Now you understand. So he says, I have learned how to abound and to what? To abase. I'm now a master of things. I am contented. If there's abundance, I'm contented. If there is abasing, I'm what? I'm contented. If there's no much, I'm what? I'm contented. Why? Because contentment has nothing to do with whether things are plenty or small. Oh, friends, are you with me? Contentment do what? Does what? Has nothing to do with that what? Things are plenty or small. Contentment has nothing to do with whether is it plenty or is it small. That okay, if it's small, just manage to be contented. No, 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 no. Manage to be contented. No. You can have all the money in this world and you're not contented. Friends, are you with me now? Contentment is because of the way we've understood these words. English words. And we now want to bring those words into the Bible. And even though that's not really, even, if you even go and search English, that's not really the meaning. We think contentment deals with when you are smart and just manage it. <laughs> that's, that's the mindset of contentment, right? But that's not the meaning of contentment, actually. Contentment is that what a man can abuse and abound. Do you understand? You know that people who have... Okay, let me explain to you. Why do politicians, particularly Nigerian politicians, why do they keep stealing money and keep stealing and keep stealing money that their are hundred generations cannot finish spending is it because they have little money 
What's the problem? They are not contented. There's a sickness in their soul. There's a demon troubling their heart. Called covetousness. Called lack of contentment. Do you understand now? There's a heart position. Their souls are being ruled by the things of life. Can I talk to you, my friends? So, when they see money, the money is talking to them. Oh, yeah, steal me. Take me. Take me. I command you to take me now. Take me now. Take me now. Take me now. Steal me. <laughs> yeah, I see it. So they take that one. They say on that one. Yeah, steal me. Steal me. The things of life are telling them what to do. Because a man in his normal senses, you will not take all the, the money that is meant for a whole state. The money that is meant for a whole state and hide it in the soccer way. You understand? And if you won't, you won't keep, keep stealing money and keeping money that you don't that you don't need. Do you know our politicians steal money they don't need? Guys, are you following me? Do you know they steal money they don't need? Do you know they have money they don't need? Do you know they have money they can't use? Do you know they have money that their children can't use? They don't need. Their generations don't need. What is battling them? They are being ruled by the things of life. They are not contented. So, contented is not in the context of, hey, I have only five naira, I, I have only two shoes and one shirt, I'll be contented. That's not contentment. Contentment is that, is that you are now a master of things. Hey, friends, are you with me? You are now what? A master of things. That even if it's only raiment and food you have, you are what? Content of why? Because you are a master of things. So, also, if, if you have more than raiment and food, if you have all the things of life, you are still what? Contented. Your contentment is not touched by what you have or what you don't have. Yeah. I feel my friends. Your contentment is a, is a, is a proof, is an outflow of your dominion over the things of life. <coughs> Do you understand? Your contentment is what? Is an outflow of your dominion over the things of life. So, when you are lacking in contentment, is a proof that what? The things of life have dominion over what? Over you. So, I've learned how to abound and how to abase. Are you following my friends? Amen. Shout hallelujah. So, even, even, what, is, even what is available is abundance, you will still find me in contentment. You will find contentment inside me. If what is available is, is not plenty, what will you still find inside me? Contentment. contentment. Now, normally, if you are to define contentment by your normal sense, by, by, by what you think contentment is, in which situation do you think you, you which, which situation do you want to apply contentment? Mm-hmm. When things are small, when there's lack, right? Mm-hmm. But I've shown you the case of Nigerian politicians. Which lack? Which lack are they having? They are having the lack of not being able to rule over things. They are having the lack of dominion. That's the only lack. Not because they are lacking physical things. <coughs> you understand? So, but there is a lack of dominion in their soul. Their soul is being dominated by the things of life. No contentment. You understand my friends now? So, don't never you think of... So, when you are reading this scripture, don't think that Paul is calling to a low quality of life. No, 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 no. He's calling to the master of things. Are you with me now? So that the day that what I can afford is what is the God's clothes that they to buy all these Akube clothes, what is to call it? Eh? Tell me now. No, Akube, there's a name. Okay. 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 If what I can afford today is okay, Okrika. You understand? I wear it with gold. I wear it as God. I wear it as a king. I'm contented. I feel my friends. Whilst my eyes are looking forward to that great time, to that great life, and I'm walking towards it, I'm walking in the principle that I can, that I should. You understand? And when the time comes, when I start ordering my clothes directly from Gucci, I follow my friends. When I start ordering my clothes directly from what? Those designers guys, I follow my friends. I'm still what? Contented. So, Okrika is not giving me, is not telling me how to behave. When I was poor, and I was wearing it, I'm not sad, and I'm not, and I'm not looking for how to steal money to buy Gucci. Yeah. 
Do you understand? Now, when, now that I cannot afford to start wearing Gucci, do you understand? And all those stuff, are you with me now? I'm still not ruled by them. I'm a contented man. I'm a master of things. Guys, are you with me now? A contented man is who? Is a master of things. Is a master over things. But a man who loves contentment is a what? Is a slave of things. Are you with me now? Do you understand now? So, when he says, if we have having food and rain, let us be, we be content. He's not saying something for no, no condition of life. He said, learn to be what? A master of the things of life. Why? Because if you don't learn to be a master of the things of life and add it to your godliness, you can't arrive at great gain. Because godliness with contemporary is what? It's great gain. Godliness with you mastering the things of life, you being a master over the things of life, you exercising dominion over the things of life, is what brings you into great gain. It's not allowed to gain God and His kingdom. Amen. Praise Jesus, says Ramon. Abraham did not mind losing the things of this world. He did not mind losing all what he had. Because he had his eyes on God. Oh, friends, may God teach us to be contented. We must be a godly people who are also contented. Moses, he saw the treasures of Egypt. Guys, do you, do you understand now? He said, he saw the, he, he, he chose the, 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 the sufferings of Christ, amen, over the what? The treasures of Egypt. Why? He counted the sufferings of Christ of a greater value. Guys, do you understand? How many of us will see treasures and will see suffering and will see the suffering we want? Praise Jesus, first of all. Shout hallelujah. So, a contented man is a man who has become what? Master of things. It's not ruled by the things of life. I follow my friends. So, contentment is not a function of lack or plenty. It's a function of what? Art. Amen. So, Paul is calling your art to a higher state. Yeah. To a state where your art is like God. Yeah. Like God's art. You think, see, see, God in the way you are now, if God gives you Eight hundred fifty-five billion dollars now. Do you think? How do you think God will feel? Do you think God will become more excited? Do you think? How do you think God will just feel in His heart? Do you think? What will change about God? What will change? The way God feels about you now. Do you think He will feel more more blessed about you? Do you think He will feel more great about you? That ah, my guy now has eight hundred fifty-five billion dollars. What do you miss God? What makes God feel great about you? What makes God feel great about you? You are aligning to His will. Do you understand? If what makes God feel great about us is not the things we possess or don't possess. I follow my friends. Yeah. That's why you can live in poverty and God still feels great about you. Yeah. <laughs> I follow my friend. You just you shall continue to be my friend. If poverty you want no wala, shall be living a holy life. Don't be preaching. Be saving souls. You are shall doing those ones. You are saving souls. Bring people to church. You are praying, you are fasting for the nation, for the city. You are my friend. I'm not angry with you. But actually, I also plan that you should have money. You see that you don't want the money. But I'm not angry. So I'm still pleased with you. Because your life is bringing people to the kingdom. At least you are fasting and praying. You are preaching. People are getting saved. Do you understand? So things, that's why Paul, Paul began to teach. That whether we eat or we don't eat, they don't, those are not things that count. Are you with my friends? Godliness with contentment is what is great gain. So if I don't arrive at great gain, we must what have contentment with our godliness, with our Christianity. Praise Jesus. Our Christianity must be infused with contentment. Contentment is God's state. In any state, God is contented. If you want to say to the God is still contented, he's in charge. Do you understand? Contentment is that you are a master of things. You are a master of situations. Things don't. Things are not ruling you. Praise Jesus, heaven, more. Shout hallelujah. How we food and let us what? Deal with what? Be what? Be content. Let us be what? Let us be content. Let us be master of things. Let covetousness not be in your soul. 
Now, what do you think covetousness is? Because if you are not content and miserable, you are what? Covetous. Now, how would you define covetousness? I want to show you this tiny, tiny thing so that you can understand what God has called, the light God has called us to. How would you define, define covetousness? Sincerely, how would you define covetousness? When you want another man's thing. Huh? Yeah, you want, well, when you want another man's thing. What is not your own? Yeah. You want to add somebody else's thing to your own thing. Right? When you want, want to add somebody else, else's thing to your own thing. This is your, this is your own meat. They give you your own meat. I don't know people who use... <coughs> you have a power bank of... <laughs> of 30... 30 mAh. 30,000 mAh. And not basically a power bank of 4,000 mAh. Your own power bank is on 95%. That person's power bank is on 50%. The person that has 5,000 mAh. And you still take 5,000 mAh, you don't need to charge your own food. <laughs> now, that, that's why you call conventional right? That you can't hear, you are wicked. You don't need to go I don't know people who have... They have the best shoes. But that person slippers, they still want to take it. That slippers, that other person is now one slipper, that other person is managing. You are those kind of friends that they, they, they come to your house. You know they have shoes, they have clothes. What are your own white shirt is still in their eyes? <coughs> that your one shirt is in their eyes. That's what you call conventionalness, right? But you could grow. But let us actually see what conventionalness is. Because you have to understand what contentment is. What is the contentment is? You've been a master of the things of life. Your heart rules over the things of life. Instead of that, don't read don't your heart. Don't read your heart. Now look at what covetousness is. Look at Luke chapter 12. <coughs> Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12. Look, I think I'm going back to this Timothy. Luke chapter 12. Praise Jesus favor, man. It's open to me like this teaching is not interesting. But they don't feel that way. No. Manage it even if it's not interesting. Just manage it for today. You have, you have been enjoying interesting ones. <laughs> Praise Jesus forever. Huh? Shout hallelujah. Luke chapter 12. But many times I feel, sometimes I feel like my t- I've felt many times this way that my teaching is not interesting. That the teaching is not interesting. And I don't know what to do. I'm just like, ah! Hey! It's still on fire! <laughs> Praise Jesus forever. Huh? Luke chapter 12 from verse 13. So this guy was teaching and all of that, blah, 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 blah. Then one guy spoke up. Now, if you read that scripture very well, this guy was talking about God's kingdom, talking to people, the, the, the crowd, about God, God's kingdom and all of that. Now look at it. And one of the company said unto him, Master, speak to my brother that he divide what? The inheritance with me. Speak to my brother that he does what? That he does what? Now this guy he what is that word? Then he just burst into a conversation. What was that? He interrupted the conversation of Jesus on the kingdom. I follow my friends. He interrupted what? The conversation of Jesus on what? On kingdom. And kingdom life. Now say, Master, speak to my brother, praise Jesus forevermore, that he divide what the inheritance with me. What is the assumption in this conversation? That the father had left an inheritance for that guy and his brother. And it was just proper for what? For the for both of them to what? To divide the inheritance. I follow my friends. May you know what counts before God and what does not count before God. May you know what it means to be content. May God live our heart from covetousness. Praise Jesus, never more. So, the guy and his brother were meant to what? To share the inheritance. So, it now appears as though the brother, whether it was the other brother or something, but it, it's, probably, it's possible it's the other brother. It's possible that the brother has said that on the best of the that is not given him out of that inheritance. And you, my friend, I want to show you what conventionalness is. So. That the brother has said what? That is not giving the other guy out of what? 
the inheritance that only him wants to what take what the inheritance and that means also that his brother was in that crowd among the crowd that he was watching because he said speak to my brother yeah. <coughs> you understand hey that is his brother too was hearing kingdom message he was in that atmosphere are you with my friends are you with me so let Galilee and normally be able to share their father's inheritance the brother says it was not used. the brother said for that they will have told jesus you know they all respected jesus yeah. it's possible the guy told everybody to even talk to the, to the older brother and brother guys said no if they say oh boy now only me go chop him this inheritance only me will take it only me and because they all respected jesus as a miracle worker rabbi ah yes no cow boy if i only like even tricked his brother to go let's go and hear jesus and he already plan what he would do in his heart so you allow the kingdom message you know when you are already slain under the anointing then they will not collect offering from you <laughs> praise your favor more so if my brother had gone to Jesus' meeting Jesus has spoken about the kingdom everybody's heart was down slain everybody was down humble in answer to his movement speak to my brother at last at least now your word has slain his heart should we, should we have to release my portion of the inheritance to me are you being my friends who is covetous? Don't look at what Jesus said. Forget, don't lie. Don't lie to me. Between this guy that was speaking and his brother, that wanted to fit the enters alone by himself, to himself. Who is covetous? The brother. The guy that wanted to, that wanted to take the enters to himself. That's what we define as what? Covetousness. But you don't quite change the narrative. So, and I'll show you what covetousness is. You also understand what content, contentment is. Praise Jesus, heaven, huh? Contentment is to be master of things, whether they are there or whether they are not there. You are their master. So, this guy told Jesus, Speak to my brother to divide the inheritance with me. A legitimate plea. A legitimate plea. Pleading for what, what belongs to him. By right. Is his right? Oh. Is his what? Is his right. Praise Jesus forevermore. The other brother was wrong. Hmm? You don't care have called a brother and say you're a bad person, you're a bad person, you're a bad person. You're a bad person. Why don't you share with your brother? Go and share with him now. I am, I am God on earth. Now go and share with your brother. You're a bad person. But what did Jesus Christ say? Look at the next verse. And he said unto him, Man, oh, I don't have time. Man, who made me a judge or a divider over you? Now don't forget. Jesus was speaking, was preaching kingdom to the people. And this man interrupted that message and brought in the matter of what? He said to divide inheritance, the things of life, legitimate things. Now we now have two things in contention. The kingdom, the things of life. Let's go. Verse 15. And he said unto them, now using that guy to preach <coughs> as an example. After I have dealt with the guy, I walk on kilo, kilo one year, kilo one shame. I walk on time with you. Who made me divide over you? That's the guys. But boy, you're feeling. Take it. He said unto them, take it and beware of what covetousness. Hey, guys, you understand now? Take it and be what? Beware of what? That was all your person invariably. That that guy was what? Being was being covetous. That the guy that was acting for his rights was what? Being, being covetous. Friends, are you with me now? <laughs> that the guy asking for his legitimate rights was what? Being hmm. Why was he covetous? What's the meaning of covetousness? Jesus was talking kingdom. The guy had a, a different thing in focus, in view. Things of life. Legitimate. And interrupted it because he thought that the things of life were more important than the kingdom message than the kingdom and his message amen praise jesus forevermore shout hallelujah he thought that what the things of life were what more important than what the kingdom and his message praise jesus forevermore let me, go, let, let me show you very well take it Beware of coach and beware of covetousness. For a man's life consisteth not 
in the abundance of things which he possesses. So that guy had defined his life and summed up his life in what? In things. Things of life. Amen. Shout hallelujah. So covetousness is when a man sums up his life as the abundance of things he possesses. Amen. Do you understand now? He said, Beware of covetousness for what? A man's life does not consist in the abundance of things he possesses. So that guy thought that what gave credence to his life, what gave value to his life was what? In the things of life, in the amount of things of life he has. That so, if he can get his own portion of the inheritance from his brother, his life would have more meaning. Amen. So he interrupted what would actually give a man's life meaning. Amen. I raised the conversation and brought the things of life and put it on a plane that is higher than the kingdom and his message. Guys, are you with me now? Praise Jesus forevermore. Praise Jesus. He interrupted the kingdom and his message. And what? And brought the things of life and placed it on the realm, on the plane in his heart. Higher than the what? The kingdom and his message. So, in that guy's heart, <coughs> praise Jesus, in that guy's heart, what had more priority? The things of life had more priority in his heart than the kingdom. Amen. So, all the words that Jesus was preaching, was say, oh, let this guy just finish preaching what he will preach. And when someone like that, this was taking long. Amen. He interrupted. Because all what you are saying, they don't confirm. That's not the pursuit of my own soul. Praise Jesus forevermore. So, the man, that guy had summed up his life, the meaning of his life, as what? As things. That when things are present, my life does what? As a meaning. <laughs> Amen. He was being ruled by things. Things are taking priority in his life than what? Than the kingdom. Praise Jesus forevermore. He was what? A covetous man. So, Jesus left what we would have called the actual covetous man and showed us the real covetous man. So, you are covetous if the things of life have a greater priority in your heart than the kingdom of God. I follow my friends. Did you hear that? You are covetous if what? If the things of life have a greater priority in your heart than the kingdom of God. You are covetous if they are summed up your life as what? As the things of life. As what you possess. So Paul said, therefore, if, if we have enough food and remain, let us be content. We must get rid of covetousness. We must be masters of things. We must know that the most important thing about our lives and not the things of life is God's kingdom. We must allow ourselves, our hearts, to rule the things of life. The things of life is not what rule our hearts. Amen. <laughs> Praise Jesus forevermore. I don't have time. Shout hallelujah. So, when we are choosing the things of life above or over God's kingdom, you are what? A covetous man. Because life only has meaning in your eyes and in your heart. When, when things are involved. When it is about kingdom, kingdom, life has no meaning. The only meaning of life that your heart understands is what? When things, is things, is in things. You are not content. And you can't come into great gain. You are being ruled by the things of life. You don't have to be over the things of life. Praise Jesus, never more. You don't know what? You don't have to be over what? The things of life. Because you have summed up your life in what? In things. You have summed up your life in things. Praise Jesus, never more. You have summed up your life in things. Oh, go back to that, Timothy. For a man's life consists not in the abundance of things which he possesses. 
Go back to that first Timothy. Chapter 6. Verse 8. And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. Amen. So, let us not think that our life have meaning when we have more things. Amen. You thinking that your life has, has meaning when you have more things is actually a proof that you are a slave to things. You are being ruled by things. Amen. You must know that your life only has meaning in the context of God's kingdom. Amen. Praise Jesus forever. Your life only has meaning where? In the context of God's kingdom. So, we must be, he said, God is contentment, is great, great. We must be Christians who are contented. We must be Christians who have said that the kingdom of God is of higher priority to us than the things of life. Amen. We must be Christians who have said that the things of this world don't have weight when it comes to God's kingdom. You know, because the word said that our life does not consist in what? In the abundance of, the abundance of things we possess. Praise Jesus forevermore. We must be Christians who are masters of things, who are rulers of things. And I'm sharing secrets of prosperity with you, and you might not understand. You might not know that these are secrets of prosperity. Even though it's sounding like this. It's sounding like as if they are telling you to live with things of life. <laughs> this is actually how to gain the things of life. Guys, are you with me? This is how to what? How to gain the things of life. Because he that loses, loses his life shall what? Shall find it. We have left all to follow you. What shall we gain? You understand? The secret of gaining in God's kingdom is what? Is losing. It's false losing. When you lose, you will gain. So, what I'm actually teaching, what I'm showing you, what Paul is saying, and what I'm showing you, they are, they are the actual secrets to what? To prosperity. The reason why then people like Papa Yerebo will continue to have prosperity is why? Because they have lost the things of life. They are masters over things. They are rulers over things. They are contented. They are content. Guys, do you understand now? No covetousness in their heart. If God can give you covetousness in your heart, you can be to that place where you are content. Amen. He can place you in charge of nature, nations. Guys, you understand now? So of us, God cannot trust us with just one million naira. Why? Because only one thousand naira is catching our heart. One thousand naira is capturing your heart. You can't rule over one thousand. Friends, are you with me now? What I'm saying are secrets to prosperity, kingdom prosperity. Men who have prospered the most in the kingdom are men who have waved goodbye the most to the things of the earth. They have waved goodbye to it. The things of the earth don't have meaning to them. You think one billion dollars has meaning to Papa Yudipo? You think one billion dollars has meaning to him? You think, you think everything he has? You think those things he has? You think they have a place in his heart? Tell me, you think they have a place in his heart? God can bless you if things have a place in your heart. Do you understand? God can do what? God can't bless you if things have a place in your heart. Amen. God can't do what? God can't bless you if things have a place in your heart. Things must lose their place in your heart for God to now begin to entrust you with things. <coughs> Did you get that? Things what? Must lose their place in your heart for God to now what? Begin to what? Entrust you with things. You must be content. Praise Jesus forevermore. We must be masters of things. We must be rulers over things. Oh, praise Jesus forevermore. Can I continue? Let me just close with this Timothy. Then I'll pick it up from... I'll just look at Matthew chapter 6 next week. Next week, Thursday, and we close this emphasis. But they that will be rich, can you say the body that will be rich? It's poor calling us to be poor. <coughs> but they that will be rich, if we read, if we read some other translations, but those who that long to be rich, 
The longing of the heart is now for what? It's for riches. If you open their heart and dissect it, and you see their heart, you see the way their heart is running. Everything their heart is calculating is what? Riches. No place for kingdom in their heart. Everybody, my friend. But they that long to be rich. I feel my friends. But they that will be rich. Oh. Riches are taking over all their will and their soul. Praise Jesus forevermore. Taking over what? The things of life has captured their, their heart, their will, their soul, their heart. So that all the rays that their heart is running, all the pantings of their heart, all the longings of their heart is to just get that riches, is to get riches. Amen. Is to do what? Is to get riches. They that will be rich. It's not that you should go and be poor. Amen. Praise Jesus forevermore. Shout hallelujah. They that long, you know the meaning of long, you know the meaning of longing. As the day passes, for what I saw my, saw the, my what? My soul longs for you. Long to long and longing means that what? It is the only thing that is set before your heart. Do you understand? To long and longing means that what? It, it is the only thing that is set before your face. So riches is the only thing that, that is set before these people's face. Riches is the only reality of their heart. So even in the middle of kingdom conversations, what they are like that guy, the only they are thinking about is inheritance, is the things of the earth. So they are not they are not they don't mind to end a service. You have to go and jello fries at home. <laughs> that guy enjoyed he wanted to end your service. This was having a service. The guy just said, oh, let's share the grace. I'm going to one party. <laughs> But I share the grace. Come and share. Come and share the grace and come and share the rentals with me and my brother. Guys, you don't understand this thing. This was in the middle of preaching. Can I help you to what you will understand very well? Let's say there's a match tonight. Maybe, maybe um, Barcelona is not even rainy again. Give me two tough matches that, that people will want to watch. Don't make your Chelsea. Oh. <laughs> give, me, give me two tough matches. That people want to watch. Oh yeah. Don't mention us now. Two tough matches. Let's say my Liverpool. Uh, let's say let's say Man City and Bayern Munich. Or oh, or oh, Man Man City and Man U. It's a derby in England. So as I'm preaching now, and my brother wants to watch that match. That's everything he's thinking about. His heart is just on that match. My brother now stands up and now say, Pastor, let's share the grace. <laughs> we have to go in play for game and go and watch ball. He stands up in the middle of the congregation and interrupts my message and say, Pastor, it's time to go and watch ball. Guys, you understand? He stands up as I'm preaching and says, Pastor, ah, it's time for us to go and watch Man U versus Man City. The church, the church will be surprised, right? Huh? But you know some of you are supporting me in your heart because that's what some of you are also thinking. So even though some of you might be surprised, this brother needs help. Why? Because we find that the brother weighed a football match and he weighed the preaching of the kingdom and he says that a football match is higher than the preaching of the kingdom than the kingdom and his preaching that's what this guy did here Jesus was preaching the guy was even about inheritance, about money, about the things of the earth legitimate things the guy, the guy was the guy have been, been looking at time okay, like 10 minutes, Jesus Christ should finish, he should finish his sermon ah 15 minutes, yes, I have just a just your my teacher talk. Okay, maybe let me give you 10 more minutes, they will finish, you will run up. Then I can now make my mind know. But all the ones, all the ones, what is mine is on what? Earthly things, things of life, inheritance. When that is, is that one, and do you, you know Jesus Christ? That Jesus Christ is a, is a very great person. It's tough. I, I believe that Jesus Christ made that guy's heart. Jesus can now really prolong the sermon. <laughs> Jesus, 
So, when John and Joseph was taking too long, what did he do? Interrupted. Master! Tell my brother to divide the enter. That, in fact, that's why I came to your, to your teaching. I'm not, it's not as if I'm in, all this kingdom, you know, I'm not interested. The reason I came is to use you to get my inheritance of my brother. I'm not interested in all this time. I have been taking it too long. Tell you to divide the inheritance. So, what, what, so what, what the guys at post to? You hear me tell the things of life are more important than what? Than the kingdom and its message. You understand now? That's the covetous man. That's the man who most of the things of life are ruling. That's the covetous man. That's the man that has defined his life in the, as their what? Abundance of things that he possesses. He, he has, his life is captured in things, not in kingdom. Our life must count in kingdom, not in things. You understand? When your life counts in counts in things, it means that what? You are a slave to things. So that guy interrupted you. Let us share, let us share inheritance. We are talking about inheritance. Houses, cows, the lands that you are talking about one land. You are talking about one village. What was that with village? What was that with with, with, with kingdom? You're talking about land. Land. So the land was not, was more precious to him than what than what Jesus was saying. Christians, some of, some, some of us are like this. We don't have contentment. Godliness with contentment is great gain. We are Christians, we are godly, but there's no contentment. We are Christians, we are godly, but our hearts, our lives are still being ruled by the taste of this life. We are Christians, we are godly, but our souls are still being led, are still going in the direction of the taste of life. The things of life, even legitimate things, are precious to our souls than the kingdom of our Lord and his Christ. They are precious to our souls than the cause of Christ. They are precious to us. We are not masters. We, we are not content. We are not content. To be content is to place a higher value on God's kingdom than on things. It's a place that I have value on what pertains to God, on kingdom, is righteousness than on earthly things. It's to rule over the things of life. Guys, you understand now? Your dominion money and the things of life. I want to close this, Timothy. I don't, I, I, do I have time to close it? Let me see. I don't want to rush it. Hmm. Let me just try and, and wrap it up. But they that will be rich. So, all the longings of the earth is to what? Is to be rich. No place for God. Do you know some Christians have no place for God in the earth? In all their plans, there is no plan for God. No plan. No plan. No plan for God. No plan for God's kingdom. It's just for things. Praise Jesus forevermore. So, the you know of one to be rich is that what? Your heart. What is controlling your heart? What your heart is filled with and full, filled, full of is what? Is the things of life. Praise Jesus, favor. A good job is more important to you than God's kingdom. A good house is more important to you than God's kingdom. Legitimate things. You know, I told you from the beginning of this of this particular emphasis. I'm not talking about simple things of life. Legitimate things are more important to you what? than God's kingdom. Legitimate things. You are rude. It can be your career, it can be your business, it can be your education, it can be your marriage. Anything that is of priority to that word, then the kingdom of God is your master. Amen. Is your master. Is your master. You may appear to be prospering at, at that thing, but as long as it's a priority to you, then God's kingdom is what? It's your master. You are covetous, you are not content. You have placed priority over God's, over the things of life than God's kingdom. You can't arrive at great gain. You are godly, but you are not contented. No contentment. You are a Christian, but there is no contentment. Then there is no great gain. Praise Jesus, fellow. But then I will be rich, fall into temptation and a sneer. <laughs> Guys, you see, see this now. So, when the things of life begins to begin to attract your soul, let me close. I'll start from. Let me just start from here next week. Does it don't let me? Don't let me. Don't let me compress, compress it unnecessarily. Let me start from your next week Thursday. 
First Timothy chapter six verse nine, right? Chapter six verse nine. Praise Jesus forevermore. But they that will be rich, that long to be rich. Guys, we must deal with conventional things in our heart. You understand? We must be people that are what that are content. Why? Because godliness with what contentment is what great gain. Your Christianity and what your contentment, your rulership over the things of life, your dominion over the things of life, setting God's kingdom as priority, and that's why we see that you have dominion. That's why we see. You don't have dominion yet over your business if it's more if it has more priority to you than God's kingdom. You don't. You don't have. You don't have dominion yet over your career if it has more priority to you than God's kingdom. You don't. You might be flourishing in it. And you're a covetous man. And this can show forth in any way. You don't have dominion yet over your education. It was what? Of, of a higher priority to you than what? Than God's kingdom. You don't have, you don't have dominion yet over your marriage. It was what? Of what? A higher, a higher priority to you than what? Than God's kingdom. And Jesus Christ says what? You are covetous. Because you have placed the things of the earth above God's kingdom. Because you think that your life has more meaning when you have the things of life. When you have a good business, when you have a good job. When it is out, when, you understand what I'm trying to say? When you have a first class, when you, have, you understand what I'm trying to say? You think your life has more meaning. Jesus Christ says, no, say, no, no, no. He says, you think your life has more meaning through that because you are living a local, you are a, you are a falling man, you are living a falling life. You are living in a fallen nature. You are living in a, by a fallen nature. You are living in a fallen quality of life. I thought that Jesus Christ should, should rebook that guy's brother. Guys, are you me? If it were you the brother case to who would you rebook? Who would you rebook? The brother, the brother that did not share. Because he should share. He's the one that should be covetous, actually. That's the person who should call covetous. But because covetous is in the context of kingdom and things, which one has priority? It's an aspiration in your soul. So you are a covetous man if anything of this earth has more priority in your soul than the kingdom of God. You are covetous. You have summed up your life, you have summed up your life as, as the things of life. You might speak in tongues, you might, fire can come out from your head. You can cast out hundred demons together at a time. Just by pointing your finger. Where there's no contentment, there's no great gain. And I'm, I've been going to show you from when I started teaching, not even today, the end product of this thing called covetousness is what? Is destruction, is perdition. It's to destroy your soul, it's to land you in the lake of fire, actually. If you can't rule over, over things, you, you, you think, how, how do you want to rule with Christ in his kingdom? You can't rule over the things of life. It, oh, <laughs> guys, you understand? You think Christ is foolish? I, get, I place a business of 1,000 naira in your care. It, 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 it got destroyed. You didn't manage it. It, it was destroyed. You couldn't manage it. Do you think I will place a business of 1 billion naira in your care? Talk to me. Do you think I will place a business of 1, 1 billion naira in your care? I wouldn't. So you don't have give, give, give all the things of life to live, to, 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 to engage life, to, do, to live our, 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 our passing life on earth. And we can't manage it. They are now ruling us. So you think that that Jesus, you that are dealing by the things of life, that you are treating, treating things of life as a higher priority than God's kingdom, you think that Jesus Christ will now give his kingdom to rule? Uh, uh, think where now? Would you do that? And God, God wants to gain. Don't even, don't even worry, God wants to what? Gain. He said anything that God gets it will do what? He will cut them down and down. He will cut them off. Jesus didn't use Jesus last time. Is the kingdom or nothing? I said the kingdom or nothing. If it's this kingdom, anything can go. Do you understand? Anything can what? He can wave goodbye to anything for this kingdom. And that's why Papa will go get get they will keep getting prosperous. And watch out for my own prosperity. I started prospering and watch out more. I'm I'll really prosper. After the other Papa will go even more. Because I'm learning to wave goodbye. I'm not covetous. I'm learning to not be covetous. I'm learning to be content. The things of life cannot rule me. You can't rule me. You can't. I'm learning to be a master. Guys, 
still left than me. These are the secrets of prosperity. Your dominion mandate and the things of life. The things of life must not rule you. Godliness with contentment is great gain. If you're going to gain, gain God and his kingdom, you must add contentment to your Christianity. Do you understand? You must do what? Add contentment to your Christianity. And what's the meaning of that? That was the meaning of that. The things of life must not, must not be your Lord. Nothing in this life must rule you. Nothing in this life must have a higher priority in your heart than God's kingdom. The kingdom of God must have the greatest priority and focus in your heart. You must, every other thing must be planned in the context of the kingdom. You understand? You are taking a job, you have to plan it in the context of the kingdom. You can't plan church time into your... Oh, how can I say this thing? You people think that, what is this guy saying? You can't want, you can't, you can't take a job and not trying to plan church around, you're not trying to plan kingdom around, no, 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 no. You're going to take a job, you have planned kingdom. So, because kingdom is forced, you've already said, these are the jobs I can't do. Do you understand? Because kingdom is forced. And when I'm saying these are jobs I can't, I'm not saying that sinful jobs. As a Christian, you shouldn't even take sinful jobs in the first place. Do you understand know, you know what I'm saying? But, I'm taking kingdom force and in, in taking kingdom force I'm thinking of my personal, personal relationship with Jesus my quiet time the time I spend with Jesus the time I spend with, with brothers and sisters the time I spend in church my availability for service in church to set up the instrument to clean the chairs my availability for service I'm also thinking of that so you know, when I'm going to take a job I won't take a job that will not allow me do those things if if it will happen that there's any time that I'm, I'm not able to do those things in church or I don't have time to for the things I should normally do as a Christian it just happened like that it's not, it's not the normal order guys are you, follow, are you following me now it's not the normal you don't plan you don't get a job and, and start planning how you will manage church with it how you will be okay ah, and start planning church no 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 you think church you think kingdom then you go out to get a job. You go out to do business. You do out to you do out, go out to pursue your career, pursue your education. It's kingdom first. Can you say kingdom first? It's kingdom first. There are Christians who live like this, though. And this is almost live. You know, some of us don't mind taking a job 365 days, Monday to Sunday, we're always at work. And we are Christians. But before, but before we got, you got that job, we knew how you were always present in church. We knew how you were fasting and praying. So you got you got that you now went for that you now they now told that there's a job monday to sunday 6 a.m to 8 p.m monday to sunday i know you need you need your service in church and when you were going to pick up you when you saw that job advert when you saw the job kingdom not come to your mind first your survivor came first kingdom was the priority first so you could pick up you had your audacity to pick up that job you are useless christian and I said with all boldness and authority, you are a useless Christian. You are a useless Christian. You are useless to yourself. You are useless to your local assembly. You are useless to the kingdom. You are useless. <laughs> okay. What, what, what are you useful to us if from Monday to Sunday you are at work from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m.? Ah, you are not even useful to yourself. You are useless to your local assembly. You are useless to your pastor. You are useless to the kingdom. You are useless to brothers and sisters. Can, can you tell me of these things? You know many Christians don't mind. You know they don't mind. You know they don't mind. As long as it's a good job. You are not here for a good job. Good job is not the first reason why you are here. Things are not the first why you are here. You are here for the boss for the kingdom. Because you will not live here with anything. You don't come here with anything and you are not going to live with anything. You are here for the boss for the kingdom. You can't take a job and now start planning how you out. You now start planning church inside it. You have the kingdom. Then you plan your job inside it. You plan where you will stay inside it. You plan your wedding, your marriage inside it. You plan your education inside kingdom. It's, the kingdom has to rule everything. Guys, you understand me? Guys, you understand me? I don't know. Ah, if some of you didn't know when I was in school. You, which lecture? Which lecture? Which lecture do you want to organize? You can't organize lecture in some and some. Even even if it was not fellowship, I so much value my my rest and my my health you understand i don't like stress 
You know, we've been in school since morning. We've been in school since like 7, 8 o'clock. They said the lecturer is coming. We waited till like 12, 1 and 2. We, we tried waiting. He did not come. The sun is now very hot. Hmm. And now the lecturer said, we should still wait. Those are those that attended that you now had exo. Now said, the lecturer said, we should still wait. Professor Adey Emma is coming. He said, we should still wait. Wait for him. I always carry my bag to leave. Go back and ask my, my, my colleague. I always carry my bag to leave. Not even because of was fellowship. Because how can you? I've been in school this morning. You didn't come at the right time. We waited till two. It doesn't want to wait till four, till five. It doesn't want my hand. My hand is hot. I always, I always leave. If let the professor, let all the professors in the, in the world, let them come and teach at that time. I'm not attending. They are stressing me. What is that? If I stay for your lecture, your stupid lecture that you didn't come for, you are a useless lecturer. I, I mean, it's what you do. You do it every time because you are useless. Because you have to value your own time. If I do not visit all my life every day, which I will not have to study God's word, which I will not have to pray, which I will not have to visit my brother and my sisters in school, which I will not have to attend fellowship. If I'm going for your stupid lecture that I've been here since morning, you, you didn't come. So I should wait. I don't need to wait. I need to go. <laughs> I don't wait. Wait for what? Say there's one, there's one lecture here on Sunday. Sunday. So I can't be lecture on Sunday. You can't be I won't be there. Nothing stands in the way of God's kingdom in my heart. I've been like this for long. And I'm not, are you following my friends? Nothing stands. Nothing. Nothing stands. Nothing stands. It's kingdom first. Can I say kingdom first? Kingdom first. You must rule, my friends. Must rule over things. It's kingdom first. Kingdom first. Pray Jesus favor more. Is what? Kingdom first. Plan everything in context of what? Kingdom. You want to get a job? Think kingdom. If I take this job, will kingdom stay be first? Please have concern. It was talking about a guy when I was preaching. One of one of church guys. What's that guy's name again? The guy that. I think he he loves to own the job, put on the gem for church. Charles, this I said, they got got a job. Amen. And this I said, this guy told me he was not going to take the job. I this I asked him why. He said because if he takes the job, he won't be able to buy fuel for church. He won't be able to to put on the gem, and he'll be missing service. So so he's not taking the job. That's a Christian. Kingdom first. I follow my friends. Kingdom first. This is God's even friend. I was even trying to encourage that God warned him that he should leave the guy. He should not. He should leave him. Kingdom first. Guys, I pray you will not, you will not see this as a stream. I pray you will see it as normal life. Oh. Do you know they are managing directors, general managers? We will not. They, they could not close their job. They could not close their work. You understand? Because they want to attend midweek service. Hey, they got a bit to see what kingdom is. So, <laughs> and if you don't see, they can't force you to see it. Oh. And if they keep preaching about it and you don't see it, you feel like their own is too much. And later you not later you become irrelevant in the kingdom because we we'll leave you behind. You understand? People who don't see kingdom first and plan every other thing in the context of kingdom, they always left behind when kingdom progresses. You see general managers, you see people who, who kingdom is burning in their heart. They do their work. Oh. But nothing that our God can say that can make them every other day they can do over time. Oh. You understand? When there's no service, when they don't, because they are the ones that will play keyboard in church. If they go late, the jail won't be on. Service can't start, the jail won't be on. The church is locked if they go late. <laughs> do you understand? So every other day they, they close by four, they close by five. Do you understand? Every other day, the can tell them to do over time to seven, eight, and they don't mind. And they deliberately do it. Why? Because of the way that kingdom will request. So that there's a day that the service is now starting by six. Or that, <laughs> no over time today. <laughs> you understand? I do my work, I close by my four, I close by five, I'm going to church. I have to go open the gate. I have to go and put on the gate. I have to go and buy fuel. I have a service to render in church. Do you understand? They close work. Do you understand? Because it's kingdom force. May God give us this man again. If we all revive, these things must be, must be in our heart. We must live like this again. Where kingdom is first. That's how revival is bettered. 
kingdom has to be first. We must see managing directors running. People are saying, "Why are running to and say, I'm running, I'm running to church. I have to go and buy food for church. I'm the, I'm the technical leader. <coughs> hey, oh my God, I'm the technical leader of my church. I have to go and buy food. A general manager. And people, and the people, the people is leading. Look at anybody no dance, anybody no dance, Ah, church man, no dance, no. A guy is running to church, running to church. I'm the technical leader. I have to go and buy food. In fact, I'm not even technical leader. I'm in technical units, technical department, and I'm really assigned to buy fuel. I have to go and buy fuel. If I don't buy fuel, service will be a mess. You see, you see, managing director running to church. May God give us men with a burning heart. These are concerns in pastors that in leaders that when they see men that, that, that are not born, when they see men that don't have vision, that, 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 that don't have passion, these are concerns. Because when you see a real shepherd, what born in, what born in the heart is kingdom. And that, that, that's how the church can prosper. That's how the kingdom can prosper. Friends, are you following my friends? I'm sharing God's burden with you. That's the, this is how we will bear revival in our cities and our nations. A Muslim cannot value their two o'clock prayer than, than how a Christian values, values Bible study. And how a Christian values how he has to be in church to set the church. To put on the gen, to put on the light, to, 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 to set the instrument. How? How are you going to set our city on fire? They don't tell you they don't take us serious. So when they tell you you are the choir because they say you to still come to come to work every Sunday. Sunday morning, you have to come to church. Because they don't take you serious. But they can't tell a Muslim to come to wait behind for a second when it's time for that Jumat. Juman prayer. They can't tell them. If they tell them it's war, they want to start war. Do you know what can start because of that thing? Fight, fight, start because of those. Muslims are crazy. They can start because of those kind of nonsense. A Muslim, they can be trapped, they can be standing on the road and it's time to pray. They can lay mat on no road and stop every car from passing. They want to pray. You want to fight, oh yeah, we'll scatter it and fight. They don't send you. People respect them. They don't joke with their time. They don't joke with their opinions. But Christians, we don't respect them. We don't even have respect. We don't think well. Kingdom is not forced. Anything goes. People don't respect us. We have to bring back revival in our own days. We have to let, let your lecturer know that, Oga, your lecture time is 12 to 2. You understand? Bible study starts by 5 o'clock. I need to go home to rest at least 2 hours. Oga, anything that is passing to me, I'm going. You don't, you don't, you don't need to go and tell him, I'm telling you your, your heart position. Your lecture is 12 to 2. You cannot come, if you come by 2, you won't meet me. Why did you come by 12 to 2? Now, I have to go, that you have planned it, and if I leave school by 2, I will get home by maybe 2.30, I will rest for like 2 hours. 4.30. Then I can go and prepare the church. Lecture, you won't meet me. Oh. The kingdom is first in my heart. Guys, do you understand? May Lord give us understanding. Come begin to pray and talk to God. Rada baka sokro preketele bala ba 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 We'll be people who walk in dominion. Oh my God. We'll be people who walk in dominion. We'll not think that our life has more meaning because we because of the things we have. Whether academically or financially or 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 or, 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 or in the in the in society. We'll not think we'll not think our life has more meaning because of all we have or what we don't have. We know that kingdom is what gives our life meaning. You know that kingdom is what gives our lives meaning. It's the kingdom first. It's kingdom first. It's kingdom first. It's not business. It's not market. It's not. It's not. It's not the another market. No, it's not lecture. It's not. It's not. It's not job. It's not. It's kingdom first. I plan my job. I plan my market. I plan my career. I plan my lecture in the context of kingdom. Kingdom is first. This is how revival will come. Revival does not come to serious people. Doesn't come to serious. It comes to serious. We must be serious. 
If we want great day, we must have contentment. We must put kingdom first. We must rule over the things of life. If not, we must not rule us. We can't be ruled by anything. It's kingdom first. The Lord will rise in our heart. Kingdom first. He will rise with kingdom first. He will install kingdom first in our heart. He will install this principle, this structure of kingdom first. It is kingdom first. For us in this church, for us in this, in this place, it is kingdom first. It's not a good job first. It's not good grades first. It's not good salaries first. It's not good souls first. It is kingdom first. We are contented. We are content. We do not interrupt the preaching of Jesus to ask for our inheritance. No, 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 no. Kingdom is important. It is first. We are not covetous. Our heart is not focused on this life and its things, on earthly things. Oh, Katobala Bishop. Oh, go do bolo bolo to kolum bolo do bolo bolo do kum bolo do bolo do doshes. Ja ja belende kondo se kumbe ya de dishes. Lokrata bala 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 doshes. Oh, go do poko to so preke te te pe te pe le bala 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 doshes. We exercise dominion over the things of life. We exercise dominion over the things of life. It is kingdom first. It is kingdom first. For us, it is kingdom first. It is kingdom first, kingdom first, kingdom first. Oh, it is kingdom first. If it's not kingdom first, you will lose your soul eventually. You will lose your soul eventually. You can't reign with Jesus if it's not kingdom first. You can't have a portion in the kingdom if it's not kingdom first. It has to be kingdom first. God cannot honor you if it's not kingdom first. He can't honor you. It has to be kingdom first. Kingdom first, kingdom first. Kingdom first. You are tired, but it is kingdom first. You are, the kingdom first must override your tiredness. You can't say you are tired you are, because you are, you are tired. How? Kingdom is calling you, you are tired. That can you be tired. That's why I'm not tired today because it's kingdom first. It's kingdom first for me. It's kingdom first. It's kingdom first. In this act, it is kingdom first. Tiredness is not enough. Money is not enough. Success is not enough. Good grades are not enough. Light sales are not enough. Nothing is enough. It is kingdom first in this act. Kingdom first in this house. This is how we promise. This is how we take the city. It is kingdom first. People see you running from work because you have to go to church, because you have to do things. There is a work in church. It is kingdom first. People see you running from the lecture because you have to go to church. Why? It is kingdom first. Kingdom first. Kingdom first. They ask you why. Why are you running? You say kingdom. There is church. There is service. I have to set up. I have to on the mic. They know that your Christianity is serious. It's kingdom first. It's kingdom first. People see you closing your shop by five o'clock, and and people are normally business start normally by that five o'clock, but you are closing shop by five o'clock because it is Sabbath day. It's kingdom first, and the day of the kingdom is here. When men will put kingdom first, because God will sweep away those who don't put kingdom first. It's time for the sweeping. It's time for the separation. It's kingdom first here. It's either you, stay, you choose kingdom first or you put you aside. There's no time to waste here. No time to waste in this mandate. It's kingdom first. It's kingdom first. You can't be at the, you can't be at the, at, 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 at market by, by 6.30. When you are supposed to allow open job by 5.30, it's kingdom first. You close your shop, it's kingdom first. Tell the customers to tomorrow, today they stand this. I'm going to go to church. It's kingdom first here. That's, that's how people come and serve you. God, that's how they want to serve you. That's how they want to serve you. It's kingdom first here. It's kingdom first here. Radha Baka Sabalaya. This is our thing in the my friends. 
you 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 plan, you, you, you get a job thinking of kingdom first. It's not it's not after you have gotten a job now. They say okay, how will I now plan church? How will I hey hey how will I go to church now? This 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 work is taking my time. What kind of thing you did? You didn't plan yourself. You didn't put kingdom first before you took the job. You didn't put kingdom first. Kingdom first. Kingdom first. Kingdom first. Kingdom first. Kingdom first. We are people who rule over the things of life. We are content. We are Christians and we are content. We are godly and we are content. And that's why we come to great day.